the city of love for the guy of love, Miles Robinson. You know what I'm this saying? Is like, yeah, you know what? And like exactly. Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Oh. This is, I mean, <laughs> we didn't even exactly. plan this. What is up, everybody, from our AT&T 5G virtual studios? Welcome on in to the call up. I'm Susanna Collins. That is Jillian Sakovitz. Um, or should I say, love you guys. You guys, um, so we we have an incredible, <laughs> um, I, I don't even know how to describe this interview that we just had, but I should preface Real. this as saying, um, this is as part of our MLS Works Soccer for All speaker series through the month of February. Um, we are speaking to Miles Robinson. He is the starting center back for Atlanta United for the U.S. men's national team. And I will be honest, Jillian Sakovitz, um, he's a guy I've never talked to him. I know you have, um, obviously with your experience with, um, Atlanta United, but I, I really did not know what to expect from him, but he is an incredibly talented young player. And this guy kind of, he threw me for a loop, man, because he, he was so, I don't know, almost ethereal and just all about the love. And then I was like, you know, it is almost Valentine's day. Maybe there's something in the air here, but he was, it just exuded, um, positivity and, and light. And it was a very, very interesting, um, and honest conversation. You learn something new every day, don't yes. you, Susanna Collins? And yes. That I think, you know, we want to paint athletes, especially defenders that they have to come out to you like this. And, you know, something that has always sat with me, um, you know, I've had a joy obviously in, in covering Miles Robinson throughout my entire time at Atlanta United. He was their first pick in 2017, second mm -hmm. overall. He's grown up at Atlanta United and he has risen every single year at incredible pace. You know, you look back and so many people kind of knew it was a possibility that this would be a mainstay player yep. on the national team. Um, and Michael it, Parker the, said that he was the best one V one of the best one V one defenders that he ever, ever saw that he ever and, played with. And that's and, Michael Parker saying it. Right. And, and I mentioned this in the interview and to go back to reading a great article by Joe Patrick a couple of years ago, where, you know, Miles isn't one to talk about himself. So instead he got a bunch of people to talk about Miles and his high school coach saying that it was the greatest, um, it was his basketball coach, but the greatest uh, athlete IQ he had ever coached or coached against. So when you talk about being, you know, really in, in your feelings and in, in, in your brain, I think that this is a player obviously with incredible output on the field with what mm -hmm. he's been doing. Um, but a soccer IQ that, is probably unmatched. Second to none. Many. Second to none. He's a he's an incredibly special player. We've seen what he's been able to do for Atlanta United on that back line. Um, the pairing with him and Walker Zimmerman with the U.S. men's national team has been exceptional. They are so successful when those two are playing together. Um, he is. He's like a really cerebral player, and I think you know he's a guy that it's it's he is a soccer player, but there's so much more to him. He's a very deep guy. He cares uh, very deeply about his family. You could tell when he talked about his family, he just kind of, he, he lit up. Like those are the things that he, um, you know, was more, more willing to open up about. He wants to go to Paris. I mean, this guy was really and truly all about the love. So I think you're going to really enjoy this conversation that we had with Miles Robinson. Let's get to it. Time now for a very special AT&T 5G call to the field, Atlanta United and U.S. Men's National Team defender, Miles Robinson. <laughs> hey, Miles. What's up? What's up, guys? How are you? <laughs> uh, Miles, I, I can't stop thinking about how cold, I'm sorry, you looked. Um, and so did everybody else in what was negative 12 degrees uh, when all was factored in up in Minneapolis to now cool upper 70s of Guadalajara, Mexico, where Atlanta United is kicking off two weeks of preseason. How are you? I'm good. I'm warming up. That's that's for sure. <laughs> Slowly but surely. But uh, yeah, that was definitely the coldest game I've ever been a part of by far. Um, so it's nice to get, you know, get some warmth in, in Guadalajara. You, you deserve Mexico. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what Honestly, I think too. Honestly, it was. I know people keep going on about it, Miles, but it, it's one of those. I'm from the Midwest as well, so like I know, I know that bone chilling cold, and that can take days to recover from. You know, like it like sticks to you. It's like yeah. so. It has it. How long did it take to kind of shed the chill? 
Uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm still kind of coming. I mean, warming up to be I fair, know. but uh, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, feel it was that. actually no joke. Yeah, it's it was no joke for sure. Um, <laughs> but but we got three points, and that's what we really needed. So happy about that for sure. Worth it. Worth yeah, it. You did. <laughs> All right. Looking forward to warmer, uh, sunnier days. You are entering your first full season under head coach Gonzalo Pineda. Like I mentioned, you guys are doing preseason in his native um, Mexico. What's the vibe been at camp since you got there last week, Miles? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the guys are working hard. Um, we know that, you know, it's going to be a long year, tough year, you know, full of up and, ups and downs. But we just got to, you know, continue to you know work hard and, you know, push each other. And I think that's what we're doing so far. So this is going to be the full season with Gonzalo Pineda as the as the head coach. What has that evolution been like of him kind of joining midseason last year to where you guys are at now? Like, what's the what's the vibe with him? What makes him um, such a good and effective coach for you guys? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's very relatable. Um, he understands, you know, what what he wants out of his players, and you know, the players so far have definitely given everything they they have for him. Um, but yeah, you know, obviously also playing in MLS, he understands the league and, and things like this. Uh, but yeah, it's been it's been great so far. I think the intensity and uh, training and all that's been really high. So we just have to, you know, stay on the right track. Pineda uh, said on Extra Time Radio last week that there's some unique opportunities in doing preseason in Mexico. You avoid the, quote, redundancy uh, of playing other MLS clubs, but also getting in some team bonding outings, things you maybe wouldn't be able to do in Florida or Arizona. Um, what have you all done? Have you gotten to do any team bonding miles? I know you haven't been, been there the whole time. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, just dinners out with the, with the team. Um, you know, some, sometimes, you know, we can't really, you know, uh, hang out, uh, outside of soccer. Um, when we're in Atlanta, you know, guys have families and things like this, but with these trips, uh, it's just the team. So we can really, you know, bond and, and things like this. So we've definitely had a good time so far. What are the bonding activities, Miles? What are you guys doing <laughs> down in Mexico? I don't know. What do you Laying think? Laying by uh, the pool. Uh, I mean, yeah, the pool is nice here. We had some pool <laughs> sessions. We had some pool sessions for sure. Uh, yeah, we're just, you know, getting to know each other more. Uh, a lot of new faces on the team. Um, so it's good to, you know, spend some time with the guys outside, you know, of the field. So it's been a great time. Have you reached a point yet? Because I know you've been with the team a few years now. Like you're not the rookie anymore. Like, are you in turn? I know like rookie hazing is not a thing, but like, are you kind of, you know, do you call the shots a little bit more? Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's definitely some younger guys on the team. Uh, they still got to, you know, pick up the bags, you know, not really cleaning the cleats or anything, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, they definitely got to earn their, you know, respect around here for sure. Uh, <laughs> on on and off the field. Keep them yeah. in check. There you go. How's your Spanglish, Miles? Is there any Spanglish? <laughs> more bien, more bien, more bien. Oh, that's that. It, that's a aprendiendo. <laughs> aprendiendo Espanol. Oh, see? there you go. Okay. Hey, hey. Let's see. He understands yeah. it. <laughs> Very good. I'm so impressed. Um, all right, Miles. Let's let's talk a little bit about you. You've had a, you had an interesting uh, childhood, going to a Quaker elementary school in Massachusetts, <laughs> where where you grew up. Your father is a jazz player, and you played all kinds of sports in addition to soccer. You were a standout hoops player, dominating on the basketball <laughs> court as well. How did you how did you kind of gravitate towards towards soccer when you had had so many talents? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I went to a, a Quaker elementary school, uh, That's wild, shout, by the way. Shout, shout out to CFS. Uh, I still got some of my best friends still, uh, are from there or I Aww. met there. Um, shout out to Harry Porter. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I was, I feel like I was taught in at an early age, you know, that love prevails, you know what I'm saying? Like <gasps> it, it's really about love out here. Uh, not for real, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's uh, beautiful. My yeah, my dad played uh, you know, saxophone. I still play saxophone. I was named after Miles Davis. Uh, my mom's like an engineer, so they're kind of hella different. But yeah, I don't know. And then I, so obviously, soccer like, just found you. Soccer found you. Is that what? Yeah, you're saying? you know, do it. Yeah, do what you love. You know, keep doing it. Have fun. Uh, you know, <gasps> love prevails, not hate. Out. You know, there's too much hate in the world. 
Oh, that, that's what I got to say. Yeah. No, I love that. Did you, how's your, do you have any musical prowess of your own? Did you inherit any of your father's uh, talent? Nah. No? He was, he was a, You're yeah. named after Miles Davis. I know, I know. But he said, if you don't want to play, if you don't want to play, don't play. You know. So you yeah. never tried. I always you got never freedom. Tried. Did you ever try, Miles? Yeah, I tried the guitar and the piano. How'd that go? Not good enough, you know? <laughs> <I'm>, yeah. <laughs> I get this feeling, Miles, that you're one of these guys that could really excel at probably anything that you, you put your mind to. Uh, we yeah. were having a lot of fun stalking your Instagram and mm-hmm. staring at your really attractive family. Very uh, beautiful. That was now we're talking. Now we're yeah. talking. It was the topic of Suzanne and I's morning text messages, actually. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. the one that nice. caught our eye the most is, I think it, yes, these, these Emmys. <laughs> Tell us about the Emmys in the Robinson family. Yeah, that, that's my cousin. That those are my cousin Keith Keith Robinson's Emmys. At Turner. He at, yeah, he works at TNT. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Big shout out to Keith. Uh, Whoa. Yeah, he has, yeah, and Reggie and Carter, his two sons, and Ashley, his wife. Uh, great people. Uh, yeah, but he has three Emmys. Uh, he's a super successful dude. Um, yeah, he works at Turner Sports, so he's mm-hmm. like in the ear of like Shaq and Charles oh! Barkley. Yeah, when they do the uh, yeah, he's like a producer or whatever. No, so. he's not Way. just in the ear, Miles, of Shaq and Chuck and Ernie Johnson. He's in the ear of me when I did gaming at Turner. I had the pleasure okay. of having Keith Robinson as my producer. No, I didn't know yeah. this. Yeah, so yeah, that's all cool. Robinson's all all successful all over the world. A lot of times we talk to some guys, you know, the first time you get like that, that sort of significant paycheck, some guys will are, you know, very smart and responsible, put it in the bank, put it into savings, maybe an IRA, whatever. Some guys, you know, (laughs) maybe go buy a car, maybe buy something for their parents. What did you do with your first big paycheck? Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like for me, I like to spend money more on like experiences and stuff. Like, you know, I'm trying to go you see places in the world you know live my life that way uh in terms of like big that. purchases i don't re- i don't know i don't really have like a big purchase i want i want a rolex that's what i want you oh. guys have rolex you guys have nice watches or what no what is- i don't i have never been a watch person but i know people that are and it's i mean that is such a thing i would probably lose it so that's that's what oh. i'm scared i'm like yeah. oh no like yeah Something um, that expensive. It's like, ooh, gosh. You know who That's does a, have yeah. a very nice watch that I stare at a lot is Mo Adu. Has, really? has of like, course he does. It seems to have like 200 diamonds on it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Yeah. But, um, he probably has several. He probably has several. Ask him. He's and yeah. can get Maybe ha- so. yeah, he might have a yeah connect or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sure yeah. he does. But I'd rather uh, experience it, you know. What's one place you want to go, Miles? When when you have a, a nice nice little off season? To I don't know. I I want to go to Paris. I've never been to Paris. Ah, uh, it's good, dreamy. Good choice. It's yeah, dreamy. you know that's what it's, I'm trying. Yeah, those are the vibes I'm I'm trying to be in. Again, like the city of love for the guy of love, Miles Robinson. You know what I'm saying? This is like a, yeah, you know what? And exactly. like Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Oh. This is. I mean, <laughs> we didn't even exactly. plan this. We didn't even plan this. It's all it's all yep. working. It's all out. coming for yeah, full circle. For are sure. you a Valentine's Day guy, Miles? Because like no. some people are like, no, <laughs> this is a made up yeah. holiday. But mm-hmm. for somebody who's you know advocates for love, I thought maybe maybe this is one you embrace. But no, real yeah, love. That but yeah. every day is every day is for love. You know, not just <laughs> not go. just Valentine's Day. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I love this. <laughs> uh, something else I love is Atlanta United. So let's talk a little bit about that. The gang is finally all back together. Um. You and Brooks Lennon were with the U.S. Machop Chol with South Sudan. Joseph Martinez and Ronald Hernandez with Venezuela. Uh, last year had a lot of turbulence uh, with leadership, coaching changes, the business. Uh, so people had to step up. H- how have you kind of seen now he's, it's hard to say, Joseph is a village elder. After Brad Gazan, I don't know if there's many guys as old as Joseph on the team. Take us inside life with with the King of the South as as one of those leaders on the team. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, obviously those guys are very big competitors. Uh, you know, they hate to lose in anything, um, which is what you need in, in a team. You know, to be a successful team, you need guys to, you know, push other players, you know, to their limit, um, you know, on the field. So to have those guys is, you know, obviously essential for our success. And obviously when they're playing well, then, you know, there's new heights our team can, you know, reach. 
Miles, we know that the uh, the success that Atlanta United had, like right out of the gate. I mean, you were part of the team in 2018, winning MLS Cup, and then you know, kind of, it's been a roller coaster for for this team, and you've sort of been there for all of it. Can you can you tell me why this Atlanta United team is poised to kind of be back where they where they were? Why 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 could this be a championship team in 2022? Yeah, I mean, um, I think when you look at the end of last season, um, when Gonzalo took over, our, I mean, our our record was one of the best in the league. Um, and it's just kind of continuing, you know, that mindset and that path you know, in the upwards direction. Um, we've got a lot of, you know, players coming back on our team, um, but also some new faces that can help. Um, but I think it's just one of those things we have to just take game by game and we can't get too too far ahead of ourselves in reality because – the second that happens is, you know, it, it can go all downhill for sure. Miles, when we had our boss, uh, Darren Eels, on the podcast last year, well, we talked about his signature cocktail. Uh, and that had me thinking, what is Miles Robinson's go-to beverage in the off season? of course? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It depends. It depends. You know, I, I'm trying to be like – off season vibes, you know, beachside. Yeah, margaritas in Mexico, perhaps. Margaritas, yeah, but more pina coladas. You oh, know. yes. Sunglasses on, you know, sunset. Those are my vibes. That's yeah. I, listen. I'll Smart. take those vibes. I'll take those mm-hmm. vibes anyway. Um, so you're much more Guadalajara than St. Paul, Minneapolis. <laughs> what you're exactly. But you exactly. grew up in Massachusetts. Sure. You know what the cold's like. You should. Yeah, it doesn't for mean sure. Like, for sure. I, I know. Mean, well, no. And you went to Syracuse. Like, types. oh my God. I know. I mean, I can handle it. I can handle right. it. But once we talk and we're talking like negative 15, then it's just a no, different Nobody type. should be <laughs> exposed to that. I'm just, I'm yeah. just going to say it. Um, Miles, one of the things that we also um, have discovered in some of our Instagram stalking, because <laughs> this is, this is part of our job. It's what we do. Um, <laughs> you funny. are, listen, it is. You are, you're a man, you're a man of uh, impeccable style. Always look put together. Um, uh, listen, I give credit where credit I'll take is. it. I'll take it. I'll 100%. take it. Um, but your, your coach with the U.S. men's national team, Greg Burhalter, he's got some style, especially <laughs> in the shoe department, which I'm sure you guys have to have noticed. Like every, I feel like every game, Greg Burhalter's shoe game is just on point do you guys ever talk are you ever like greg like give us the hookup or i mean like are you weighing in on on his fashion because i i i'm always impressed always impressed by it yeah um yeah i think that's kind of how he can relate to some of the players sometimes um but yeah obviously all the guys respect the shoe game for sure Uh uh-huh but me, you know, I'm I'm Team Adidas, so I, I can't really be wearing uh, Jordans like that. Um, exactly. Shout out to Adidas. Where's my, you know, I need a bonus after this. Miles, let's talk a little bit about the U.S. men's national team and your, um, you know, your colleagues on that team and, and how fun you guys are um, to watch as you kind of gear up for the final World Cup qualifiers. We want to do a little bit of a rapid fire, kind of like senior superlatives uh, you did in high school, but we're going to do it um with your counterparts like All i said right. so get ready for a little bit of game time we're gonna do some superlatives with the u.s men's national team start off really easy who is the biggest kid on the team weston oh easy less okay who um who controls the playlist in the locker room uh it depends but okay. i'll say tim way ah! or or kellen okay i could see that Biggest bookworm? <laughs> Matt Turner. Is there anything he can't do right, Matt Turner? <laughs> this guy's smart, smart, smart. <laughs> so great. Um, who spends the most time getting ready, like putting themselves together? <laughs> uh... I don't know. I'm, I might say <laughs> Bello. No, it's not me. It's not me. It's not me. I might say Bello. I might say Bello. George Be- Little George? I, I, yeah, just because. Just because, yeah. Who's the guy? Now, I have to imagine Greg uh, runs a very tight ship, so people probably make their curfews and are on time. But who is the most likely like to show up maybe a few minutes late, like last to get on the bus? 
kind of situation. So genius. So genius. So dust. Okay. Okay. Who's the first to go night night? <laughs> Who's the first to bed? Um, I don't know, like Brendan Aronson. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's funny, but it is funny. I know, <laughs> <It's> like, I know. <laughs> Brandon Aaron's he does, he seems very serious. I don't know. That's just my never talk to him. But no, nah, no, nah, he's a jokester. Yeah, everyone's a jokester. We're all clowns. Um, oh, this is good. The, on the fashion front, whose closet would you most like to borrow from? If you could raid anyone's closet. Kellen, Kellen, Kellen. That is the right answer. Yeah. He has a stylist, by the way. Yeah, we just want to expose does he? that. Yes, he does. He has a stylist. Uh, was it Cole Bassett who, who so Bassett how much are you, outed him? How, how much are you paying a stylist? Like, I don't, That's I don't a very good question, Miles. You should find out. Do some research for us and find <laughs> out because Cole Bassett definitely dropped the ball on Kellen. And then when we yeah, brought it up, he like, like, mentioned like, it. Uh, <laughs> and then when we had Kellen on, he's like, oh, I have a friend. I have a friend. <laughs> a friend. Like, we heard it yeah. was a stylist. That he conveniently uh, pays. Last yeah. but not least. Or, or Tim Wea. Or Tim Wea. Or... Uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's, okay, I, I need to pay to more attention to Tim, Tim Wayne's yeah, yeah, style. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we've overlooked him. We have. Uh, last but not least, uh, who would plan the World Cup after party? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. It could be a group effort. It could be a group effort, and it would be a great time. I, I, I'm not. Everyone I don't would contribute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you contribute to that situation, Miles? Uh, the great vibes, you know, the great energy. <laughs> you really yeah. need to even ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, speaking of World Cup, Miles, I mean, this is, you've got one more round of qualifiers coming up. Um, everyone's feeling pretty optimistic. I'm sure you guys are feeling optimistic in camp. Have you thought about, I mean, it has to be a dream, right? World Cup is is the dream to play in a world cup. Have you thought about what that could be like? Like, have you allowed yourself to kind of go there yet and imagine yourself taking the field? Or are you kind of like, Nope, not until, not until it happens. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Not until it happens. No way. Yep. Yep. Living yep. in the present. You know, you I am to. learning a lot. No, I feel Thanks. like I need to take my life cues from miles here. Exactly. It's it's more peaceful. It's more peaceful that way. It's all about. Um, <laughs> Miles, uh, you're a member of Black Players for Change. Last year, you created an awesome jersey for the Blackout Collection to promote and inspire um, coalitions built toward equity, playing in Atlanta City, obviously with rich history um, in the fight for racial equality. What do you? What are kind of some of your plans, or how do you hope to be involved in in 2022? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, it's, you know, playing in Atlanta is like, you know, it's an honor and it has so much history in terms of civil rights and all this. Um, so that's actually, it's just amazing, you know, being a, a black player to, to get to play in the city um, and have somewhat of a, a voice in, in the black players for change and all this. Um, but yeah, just definitely sticking up to date with Justin and, you know, other, you know, board members on black uh, players for change to, you know, help any way I can. Um, yeah, uh, there's definitely going to be some things this season, but uh, yeah, they're kind of under wraps right now, or you know, low key. But oh, so we could we have that to look forward to. Is this going to be like? Is there a big sort of announcement coming? <laughs> no, nah, I, I don't think there's. Tease? I'm not. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know about all that. But. No, you guys are doing such incredible work, though. So whatever you're doing, um, we cannot wait. We cannot wait to see it because and that jersey was so dope by the way. Loved it. For sure. For sure. Well done. Well done. Um, we sourced some fan questions and we have one from Ricky Ricardo. That is not like Ricky Ricardo as in like the old movie star, by the way. Um, but on that note of Atlanta, what is your favorite spot to hang out at in Atlanta? He wants uh, to. Yeah, I don't know. I like, uh, just chilling outside at like Piedmont Park or, you know, somewhere I'm at like Pond City Market or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Good spots. Now everyone's going to be searching for you there. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. Definitely. <laughs> Don't, they see me. They see me. Are you cool with people? Like, do people recognize you in Atlanta? Are you, are you cool with that? Or does that kind of like creep you out a little bit? I don't know. I think it always depends on the situation and how yeah. they approach you. But depends how creepy the person is. <laughs> exactly. They have to. They have to approach me with love. You know what I'm saying? None of this. Yeah. None of this like weird. Yeah. I wish but, we had yeah. a counter for how many times 
Miles has said love. In it would have made for an excellent drinking game. I know. We should have darn it. Well, darn it. We'll have, darn we'll, it. Have, we'll, have, we'll have Miles back. Miles um, could have had a pina colada. We, I'm ready. Like, right? I'm ready. Yeah. This is, I mean, now this is my kind of Valentine's Day. I'm, I'm here for that. <laughs> Well, Miles, thank you so much. Uh, we can't wait to see you. For everybody, remember Atlanta United's season kicks off February 27th, taking on Sporting Kansas City. We can't wait to see you, and uh, I'll see you before then. Yeah, for sure. Thanks so Thanks, much, guys. Miles. Yeah. Hey, happy Valentine's Day. Hey, you too, you know. All Spread love. the love. Spread the love. I am so excited for that first Atlanta United home match uh, hosting Kansas City. And if you feel like you haven't heard that in a minute, it's because. You haven't. Do you want to know, Suze, the last time Atlanta played Kansas City? Hmm. Oh, it was a while ago. I think COVID. So it was May 2019. Yeah. The team was this different. Michael Parkhurst was on the team. Leandro Gonzalez Perez, Darlington Nagby. Was Jeff um, Lorenowitz still on the team then? Or 2019? He yeah. was. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Didn't start that game, but uh, Joseph Martinez had a brace. He got a goal from Barco. It was a 3 nothing win wow. for Atlanta United. And, you know, these are like two titans. Who was the head coach? Who was the head coach? Frank DeBoer. Frank DeBoer. <laughs> wow. So you, my my you, things have changed. You want to talk blast from the past. But, you know, I'm really looking forward to it. It's like two titans in MLS. And I, I love to see a Peter Vermees coach side going up against Atlanta United. So oh. I am really really looking forward to that I'm just one. we are we are 18 days away from the start of the MLS season it I mean this is guys it is here it's basically here MLS is back so soon and yeah we could not be some, more more excited for it some would say it never left it, <laughs> like me <laughs> off season uh, what what is that here for that uh let's get into <laughs> here for this Something that I'm uh, not here for is my own disrespect <laughs> to the Columbus crew in last week's What You Gonna Do in 2022. Uh, for the record, I did have my <laughs> kind of thoughts on the Columbus crew written down. I just yes. went right over it, not to be shady, but I kind of blame the crew for that because they had a relatively forgettable season. Oh, she went there. Do you know what's so funny, Jill? After Well, they're the reigning champs. I know. Well, playoffs. can I tell you that this, this resonates with me because last year, you know, they make us do these preseason predictions, which we hate. And here's why. I picked the crew to for everything. win MLS Cup repeat <laughs> champions. I picked Lucas Zellerayan to win the golden boot. I picked Lucas Zellerayan to win MVP. So... Um, I forgive you for <laughs> this uh, oversight, if you will, because it was it was a lackluster performance from the crew. And if I'm going to say what I'm here, like I want to see from them, I want to see them bounce back from what yes. was. Well, a uh, you you year. took my Eastern Conference. What you're going to do in 2022? Uh, right out of my mouth. It was, Who are you, Columbus Crew? Who are, are you? you? Are you the reigning champs of 2020 or are you the I don't make the playoffs of 2021 to be determined? But one thing I do know is that we have a sitting invite to sit with D Haslam, sweet D in a suite, and we want to take her up on that. So that is my goal for us. And uh, on the note of accountability, uh, it's not also my fault that I forgot the Columbus crew because the New York Red Bull sent us a bottle of wine and I had just about finished it when I started to get into the state of Ohio. So I washed this, by the way. It's just a prop on my desk now. But there oh, it is. I, gotta f- I keep it right there because it makes me happy. So blame the New York Red Bulls. Is Like, is this a new rivalry? Eastern I don't, Conference. Boom, I, boom, boom. I, I don't know. But two people that are not a new rivalry, two people, in fact, that we saw hug each other um, in the latest preseason news. And I think that everyone was con- confused as I was because there's so many questions to be had. Becky G., scoping out Bruce Arena and calling him out and and giving the man a hug. I have so many thoughts on this. So I was first alerted to this by our good friend, Kalen Carr, because he likes to send me, he he's, you know, he's always looking out for us, by the way. He's always like sending me things that we should talk about on um, the call up, which Kaylin, add me for. to the group chat, please. I know it's very sweet. So he, he not the me, group chat, a group chat. <laughs> he sends me know, this you know. clip. He sends me this clip of Becky G and Bruce Arena hugging. And it is the most hilariously awkward hug you've ever seen. Bruce Arena, I mean, this is just my observation of it. In my eyes, Bruce Arena clearly has no idea 
who Becky G is. And he just was just a nice young lady a nice wanting young a young lady. Do you remember when he told us, I'm not familiar with your work? Like before yeah. we started our interview with him, this is like how I well, he's not familiar with us. He's Clearly definitely not familiar <laughs> with Becky G. But then I thought, so they have this kind of awkward hug and he kind of gives her like the one arm hug, which is always a little bit weird. And I'm, but then in my head, I'm like, what if just like on the sly, Bruce Arena is like a big Becky G fan and like jamming out to Mayores or like in shower. And I mean, that's also a visual that I think um, is pretty phenomenal to have. So I don't know, maybe we're not giving Bruce enough credit here, but my initial reaction to this was like, he had no clue who this was. It's like, that's Sebastian Legette's girlfriend. She's also like really famous and has she also millions, has millions of followers. She has more followers than any MLS Anybody. player. Anyway. Um, yeah, I'll listen, I'll give Bruce credit. Um, I'm sure the man, like, you know how you get these uh kind of like info packs on like mm-hmm. the faces and the people you gotta know? I'm sure <laughs> Bruce Bruce has been given a heads up. But in my mind, I was expecting that to go more like, who's this? Who's this? Like but I don't I don't think he would do that. Um, but if you haven't seen it, I'm sure we're going to throw the video up. It is it is must watch preseason MLS TV. And then again, like Sebastian Legette has was it, uh, you know, played for him with the Galaxies, obviously now playing with him with the New England Revolution. I'm sure they've had like some family player outings and Becky G's been around um, and hugged Bruce. Let's hope. Let's give Bruce the benefit of the doubt here. He knew who Becky G was. Well, speaking of the revolution um, and putting it out there, there is some outstanding merch that they have just released uh, that I could not be more here for, Jill. So as we know, they um, they no longer have the uh, the colorful crayon badge. It is they have rebranded and it's this very classy looking crest. So they've put out all kinds of new merch and this T-shirt is just the best. It is a t-shirt that has the crest on it and it says zero fc's given now if you don't know if you're not privy to what that means so fc stands for football club and this is very very on brand for the new england revolution because when they unveiled this rebrand that was part of the whole thing. It was not another FC. They put out a tweet and a video about it. This proudly not another FC rebrand pack. You know, Suze, they often send these rebrands to us media members, which is always a little fun to open a nice little box uh, from our MLS family. Well, the New England Revolution sent out a great one um, when they had their little rebrand. And not only did I get some cool stuff, (laughs) but it serves... Oh, hey. There's my laptop uh, stand. <laughs> That's amazing. What yeah. a great use for it. It's a great box. Half to well, be said. Uh, props. It is the perfect height for the laptop stand. There so. you go. What's on tap, everyone? Well, this is super exciting, Jill. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited because for many reasons. Um, I get to go to Charlotte this week. As oh. we know, Charlotte... Oh. Uh, it's their inaugural season in MLS coming up and I am shooting a feature with Kaylin Carr, who we mentioned, um, just kind of getting to know this club, getting a sense of what they are going to be, what this, the identity of Charlotte FC is going to be heading into the 2022 season. We're going to talk to um, a bunch of people, different people surrounding the club. So it's been so long since I've done a, a shoot like this where we have a few days to spend in a city um, and actually do some like proper sit down interviews. And I, I love Charlotte. It's a, it's a fantastic, fantastic city. So I'm just, I'm, I'm really excited. It's been a minute for me. A little FaceTime is yes. good for the soul. Yes. Um, something that just came out um, is the fact that Atlanta United is set to unveil their new secondary kit at Piedmont Park. That's going to be Saturday, uh, February 19th. It's going to be festival style. Atlanta United uh, president Darren Eels and select players will be in Miles Robinson said in attendance. I have have no insight. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know who's going to be there. Um, But we've got big things brewing at Atlanta. So I look forward to seeing all the fans shortly. Yay. That is so much fun. Um, Awesome. Well, guys, Thanks for for tuning in. Thank you, Miles Robinson, for for sharing all the love today. Who doesn't need a little love? We're sending it out to all of our listeners, all of our viewers. We do love y'all. What's 
up, everybody? It is Susanna Collins and Jillian Sackovitz, co-hosts of The Call-Up. And if you want more Call-Up action, hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of The Call-Up every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos as well?